lesson we're going to be talking about how the supply of labor is determined in the labor market and how the interactions of the demand and the supply for a particular type of labor determine the equilibrium wage rate and the quantity of workers that will be hired in any given market. In two previous lessons we learned about how the demand for a particular type of labor is determined. We were looking at the market for workers in bakeries. We can just call this the market for bakers. We learned that there's an inverse relationship between the wage rate, I'll put wage rate on our vertical axis here, and the number of workers, that's the number of workers. Sometimes you just use the quantity of labor, there's an abbreviation there, demanded by firms. Now the reason for that was that the marginal revenue product of labor decreased as the level of employment of a particular type of labor increased. So what we ended up with was a downward sloping demand for labor curve representing the marginal revenue product. In other words, the amount of revenue that each additional worker earned a firm, which is determined by the marginal product of labor multiplied by the price of the good being produced. Of course, at higher wage rates, fewer workers in a particular labor market are demanded, whereas at lower wage rates, more workers are demanded. So that raises the question, how is the supply of labor in any given labor market determined? In this lesson, we're going to talk about how the supply of labor is determined and how the equilibrium wage rate in a particular labor market will be determined by the supply and demand for labor. So what about labor supply? Who supplies labor, first of all? That's the first question. Households supply labor in the resource market. This lesson is part of a series of lessons on resource or factor markets. As you know, factors of production, land, labor, and capital are supplied by households to firms in resource markets. So what would lead households to be willing and able to supply more of their limited labor to a particular industry? Well, that's pretty simple. There is a direct relationship between the wage rate in a particular industry and the number of workers willing and able to work in that industry. Let's just think for a minute about why there is a direct relationship between the wage rate and the quantity of labor. In fact, this relationship is really quite simple. We can just look at our graph here. If the wage rate for bakers in the bakery market is $3 per hour, very few people are going to be willing to work as bakers. Of course, at higher wage rates, the number of people willing to work as bakers is going to increase. So what we'll see is that there is a direct relationship between the wage rate and the number of people willing to work in bakeries. That's what determines the upward sloping supply of labor curve. As wages in a particular industry rise, households will switch from other industries. People who could be bakers could also work in other industries. They could work in factories. They could become school teachers or nurses. If the wages earned by bakers are higher, people are likely to switch into the bakery industry or learn the skills needed to become bakers. This explains the direct relationship between the wage rate in a particular industry and the number of people or the quantity of labor in that industry. So now that we understand why there is an upward sloping labor supply curve, we can pretty easily see how we can find the equilibrium wage rate in a particular industry. Remember, wage rate is simply the price of the resource labor. Therefore, the equilibrium, we'll call this WRE, equilibrium wage rate, is determined by the intersection of demand for labor and the supply of labor. This is also how the equilibrium quantity of employment in any particular market will be determined. We can see on this graph that the equilibrium wage rate, given the current supply of people willing to work in bakeries and the current level of demand for bakers, will be $15. I'll call this WRE, $15 per hour. And the equilibrium quantity of people employed in this market will be below that intersection point. I'm not going to bother with numbers there. We'll just call that QE. So the equilibrium wage rate is determined by the supply of labor, which is an upward sloping line showing that at higher wages, more people are willing to work in a particular industry, and the demand for labor, which is a downward sloping line showing that firms are only willing to hire more workers if the wage rate they can pay those workers falls due to the diminishing marginal returns and the decreasing marginal product of additional workers that a bakery hires. Here we go. One step back.